Santosh had told me, uh, since it is Guru Purnima, speak on the Guru. And I said, I will speak pretty bluntly and that will hurt a lot of, <laughs> that will hurt a lot of people's feelings, so that's not a good idea. Then she said, then speak on the Shishya. I said, it's the same talk. <laughs> it's, it's basically the same talk. So then she said, okay, then speak about the affirmations because I was telling her how the affirmations are an entire manifesto for manifestation, you know, how the affirmations are an entire template for manifesting things. So she said, speak about the affirmations. I was all prepared. I can still do that. But today morning when I was sitting in my meditation, I got this very clear sort of, it's two acronyms basically, the entire Guru Shishya relationship is explained in that. So I am going to call the talk, How to Lose to the Guru so that you win. <laughs> so you need to lose first so that you can win. Lose is the behavior, it's an acronym, L-O-S-E, lose is the behavior and this is not my credit, this is all the power of the gurus today because they are all massively active and from the morning I have been in this really charged and trembling state. So this thought also came into my mind, so lose, lose is the behavior that is expected and win is the gains that we will get later, so it's just like a shorthand. So. Lose, L is for loyalty, O is for obedience, yes. I'll explain each word. S is for seva or service and E is for effort. Now these are the only four things that you really need when you are a shishya. Now there is a difference between being a shishya and being a, a student. The word shishya is the only appropriate word because you know even the word disciple doesn't really capture. Because when you are a Shishya, it means that there is a direct energy connection between you and your Guru. Which means that those who are advanced enough in Yoga can actually see lines of energy, streams of energy or cables of energy going chakra to chakra from you to your Guru. And the connection is not just to your Guru, the connection is to the Parampara or to the lineage. The system in which you are learning. It is very rare to have a Guru who is not part of a Parampara. It's very, very rare. A Parampara is very important because you need to know that the person is authentic. Now the yogic tradition is very clear. Before you accept somebody as a Guru, you are allowed to test that person for three years. You can wait three years before you accept a person as the Guru. But once you accept the person as the Guru, no more tests allowed. Now loyalty, why is loyalty important? You know, especially today it is very, very important because you see people, they basically look at spiritual practices like uh, something to indulge themselves. I call it spiritual supermarket shopping, you know. They just hop from, I have learnt 18 systems, 19 systems. You have learnt not even one because you have not given any one sadhana or any one system any time to settle in you. Other than that, when you accept or when somebody formally accepts you as a Shishya, the word Guru, Gu it means darkness, Tamas, Ru means dispelling, removing. The Guru is the sun that dispels darkness. So they take very tremendous spiritual responsibility, not even at a conscious level, very often it is at a subconscious or an unconscious level. You connect to them, you are drawing a lot of spiritual sustenance because when you start, you are not strong enough. If you have taken from a person for considerable amount of time or even briefly and then you are going, running around, exploring other options, you have wasted that person's time. You have also, in a very deep sense, committed a sin. Nobody asked you to say, you are my good. The Guru never asks you to say, be my disciple. It is your conscious decision. Once you have made that conscious decision, loyalty is expected. Because 
when you are doing a sadhana it is an old promise in yoga when you are doing a sadhana 50% of the work is done by you 50% of the work is done by the parampara they will guide you so when you are not loyal when you are spiritually promiscuous you are actually violating not just the person because the person is not really important the person is a representative of the parampara or the lineage and that lineage if it is an authentic true lineage can be traced back to the adi guru who is shiva <coughs> the person is a representative of shiva at this point i must say that santosh is a female guru but there is only shiva energy from her just the shiva energy flows from her all the time it's not that devi energy at all it's very much that shiva energy so when you are being disloyal or when you are going around exploring or when you are going around thinking you have not thought it through before you think it through and you commit you are my guru or you ask somebody to be the guru or you ask to be accepted before that you can explore all you want but once you have made the decision and then you break it or you are going around here and there you can learn whatever you want but sadhana and practice and the lineage comes only the power the shakti flows only from one channel now why that it, it should be so i do not know it is the way it is <coughs> it is the way it is so if you break that then you are just setting yourself back because then the universe decides this person is not really serious about spirituality this person is not really serious about growing let us give them a few lifetimes where they will be floundering around and that will be so loyalty is very important loyalty is very very important in fact even somebody like osho who never asked for it in the last year of his life he actually formally made an announcement that from now on i will say loyalty is very important he had actually said that it doesn't work any other way what he was saying is that the shakti cannot flow if there is split mind or there is <coughs> so loyalty is not again it is not loyalty to the actual person who lives for 70 or 80 years it is loyalty to your lineage it is loyalty to the the fact that this person represents shiva so if you are not loyal to your guru you are actually being disloyal ultimately to the adi guru and so loyalty is very important and lots of stuff cannot happen unless that loyalty is there because you have to deepen your channel and the only way to deepen your channel is by loyalty not by spreading yourself thin all over the place now the next one obedience is a very difficult one today because everybody wants to be individual everybody wants to be independent those kind of things now no real authentic guru will ask you to do something stupid or immoral so first of all that that fear can go <coughs> secondly what does obedience mean we are obedient all the time we are obedient to the laws of our society we are obedient to all the unwritten rules of our society we are certainly obedient to our boss at work so we are <laughs> we are very well trained in obedience and we are very well habituated to obedience the person who can give you the most important and valuable thing in life that person we start negotiations but that is not the yogic reason why they insist on obedience they couldn't care less whether you are obedient in the way that we understand you know it's a big value in our family is children you are back answering me you are talking back to me you are not obedient you know that is not the obedience that yoga requires yoga understands something because there is an energy connection there is a chakra to chakra connection if you can put your personal not so well developed will aside and allow the shakti of the guru to work through you when the guru says something when the energy from the guru is flowing into you it as it flows from santosh any time we sit near her or even if we are not near her it is doing something the energy flows because it is creating a nadi system taki the prana can flow and transform you you know it is creating a nadi system so that the kundalini can work whenever we are obedient the shakti deepens the shakti the impact of what the guru says deepens that's a very simple thing if he or she says pankha band karo negotiation chalu mat karo at that moment 
even if it is a stupid thing to say just go and because the point is not ki pankha chalu hai ki band hai the point is are you open shivani keeps saying we are not big enough to receive 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 because another very dangerous word our surrender is not complete now you know santosh had once told me if you are surrendered rohit then why do you have any complaints <laughs> if you have surrendered everything is happening according to the will of the divine so whatever is with you at the current moment is exactly the right thing that should be happening to you exactly the most so your surrender is partial and you know i had to accept that moment yes i am she's right my surrender is partial my surrender is incomplete because i still have these projections and expectations now the other problem with obedience is and it is a big problem today people have these huge opinions and expectations as to how a guru should be yeah a guru should be vegetarian or he should be in this way or he should behave in a certain way obedience is to cut all that out or you should be compulsorily compassionate you should never scold you know these are all the the pre existing conditions we come with now the minute you come with these pre existing conditions what you do is that you are setting up barriers to the shakti and the guru is not even consciously doing once the person is the guru it is not just her it is the parampara the parampara works through the guru who is at that moment the best conduit so if you don't obey you are saying i still think i know better then the attitude of the parampara is figure it the more you obey even the small thing that is why i said santosh never says no twice in life she told me no first time i didn't listen massive asking big time very bad second time pull back even this when she had told me today in the morning i just realized she said speak about the guru speak about the shishya and you said no <laughs> or rather you put you put one impossible condition there you know that yeah it's better i don't speak like that because many people will really feel that i have blistered them with acid you know so <laughs> so let that be so obedience i began to understand is actually just discipline do the word in the parampara in all yoga it is always obedience you have to obey you know uh, gyaneshwar in maharashtra is very big gyaneshwar and gyaneshwar the gyaneshwari he has written his father was a sanyasi but he had lied because he was married and he had run away to banaras and he had taken diksha and so his guru found out and he told him go back and he said but you know i have taken sanyas now how can i go back and he only said i am ordering you to go back and live with your wife in a normal way he had four children those four children are probably four of the greatest spiritual people the planet has ever seen so what appeared to be what appeared to be a breaking of the social or societal rules and ganeshwar and dyaneshwar were all always abused sanyasi's children sanyasi's children sanyasi's children but today who remembers today all we remember is ganeshwari you know which is by the way one of the great spiritual classics of the world unfortunately decent translations do not exist but it is just an extraordinary book it's his commentary on the bhagavad gita so by obeying his guru even though his guru was ordering him to break the societal law maharashtra benefited by having four of the most immensely powerful spiritual people the world has ever seen and their energy is still flowing <coughs> their energy is still flowing so do not ask if you have accepted that this person is enlightened if you have accepted that this person is liberated do not ask why and no decent guru will ask you to do immoral and weird things sometimes in special circumstances perhaps but normally they won't so the third thing is seva now this is the most difficult for people <laughs> yes yeah, service if you don't do seva if you don't do something in return 
whatever you are drawing is just stealing. I am making a harsh statement, I know. The energy that you are drawing from a person, if you are not making a return, it is tantamount in yoga to theft. So you have to be, if you accept a person as a guru, your responsibility is greater because the real guru will never complain or ask. You have to figure out, is my guru okay physically, mentally, in health, in emotion, in finances? Is there anything I can do to make my guru's life better? Is my guru lacking in any way? That is your responsibility. If you do not fulfill that responsibility, you are still by coming and sitting, by coming and drawing the energy, by coming and learning. It is your responsibility because when we come to the what is win, then you will understand why this seva is so. So seva can take multiple forms. The easiest way, which of course people have the most difficulty, is just giving money. <laughs> but you know, I have a theory that everybody's genuine emotion is tied to money, you know. That any time there is a really intense emotion, it is in some way connected with money. So you don't have money, you, there are so many things you can do. Here is an epitome of seva. This person comes any time we have. <laughs> yeah. She does seva totally. And she herself has told you what the rewards are. You know? So you need to figure out, you need to figure out in what way can I make my guru's life better. And the last is effort. The Guru doesn't need your obedience. The Guru doesn't need your seva. Actually, <laughs> yeah, the Guru doesn't need anything from you except your shramana, the, the shrama, the word for spiritual striver, the word for people practicing yoga in the actual yogic tradition is shramana, the person who strives, jo shram karta hai. Yeah, because the Guru wants you to become liberated. The Guru wants you to come to the same or even surpass. In fact, there is a very famous story. You know the Nathpanthis, the guys who wear the ropes around there. Yeah. So Matsyendra Nath was the greatest Nathpanthi, and he was so advanced that he could just walk up to Shiva and talk to him. So Shiva was very pleased with his accomplishments and said, "Okay, ask some rare, rare boon." And he said, "I want a disciple greater than me." Yeah. He could have asked for anything in the universe and this was all that he asked. I want a disciple greater than me and Shiva is in a fix now. You know? <laughs> there is nobody greater than Matsyandrana. So okay, I will be born and he was born as Gorakshana. He was born as Gorakshana because he wanted a disciple greater than me. So for the Guru, if he is an authentic Guru, he wants you or she wants you to go ahead on the Parampara. But that cannot happen without effort. To say that, oh, I have surrendered, now you please do all the work. No, that, that is not how it works. You have to work and you have to work very, very hard. The effort is very, very important on your part. And in fact, that is the most important part. That, unfortunately, is where people... <laughs> that, unfortunately, is, yeah, that, unfortunately, is where people... So, benefits, what is the win? What happens if you lose? <laughs> what is the win? So by losing to the Guru, where do you win? The first thing is you become wise. W, wise. The word is Jnana. You know, a person who is enlightened or a person who is just together, he starts looking at the world in a much different perspective than he used to. It is not that the circumstances of life have changed or improved, but that he has changed, or she has changed and improved. So that is actually jnana, but you know, wisdom is a very good word. Why is it a word that we are so reluctant to use? To say that somebody is wise, why do we have a problem with that? To become wise is the hope, you know, which is why I don't like all this overt sentimentality, you know. Swami Vivekananda also didn't like it. He used to call it these stupidities, you know. Lotus feet and compassionate glance. <laughs> oh, the Guru's lotus feet. Ah, the compassionate glance. <laughs> yeah, he didn't like that. He used to call it these stupidities. He was like, if you are doing sadhana, you should become more intelligent. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't become more emotional. You know, you shouldn't. The next thing is a very important and powerful word. It is a word that Sri Aurobindo basically gave to the world. The next thing you become is more integral. I. 
In fact, Sri Aurobindo used to say, and I also say, that my religion is integral yoga, Hinduism is my culture. You know, so to be integral means that all the dimensions of your life, they mesh together. We are scattered. You know, we are one person at work, one person at home, one person before our wife, and one person before our wife when the, our mother is there. <laughs> yeah. So when we are integral, we become the same everywhere. We become we start operating at a much higher level of consciousness, which is why Aurobindo began one of his books. Now, Aurobindo is one of the great influences and a lot of his power, you know, he makes me do stuff. One of his books begins with this awesome sentence. It's, I think, the best sentence in the English language for me. All life is yoga. So when you are integral, there is no special time of the day when you are being spiritual. <laughs> you are spiritual all the time. You start living in that. So, you know, if you can really understand and learn, if you can really understand and learn, because what Shibani said about her, she is not saying because Santosh is her mother. The truth is, I have seen all the top names in India today and I felt their energy. Absolutely no difference. The same energy, the same power flows and today it is flowing like a Himalayan waterfall because all the energy is up anyway. And the last is most important. What is the purpose of yoga? And the old answer to that is you are to leave your human limitations behind and become a deva. Numinous, you know what? A deva literally means something that glows and shines. When a Deva is present, everything, the person, the environment, everything becomes, it starts glowing, it starts shining. The word numinous means presence of a Deva. So that is the end. You are to become a Deva. You are to access that divine aspect. You are to become more than merely a mammal that has decided to stand up. You are to come to the level of potential that only a few really great people, you know, Jesus or Gorakshana, people like that. That is your job. You are to become numinous. Numinous is not a very well-used word. Everybody overuses the word enlightenment, liberation, attainment. I would prefer the word numinous because it means that you glow. It means that you glow. And, you know, I'd, in one of my earlier talks, I had said that the human being is more important than the gods in our culture. Because the human being is capable of becoming rishis and brahma rishis. And so that is the, the last thing is we must become luminous. So that is what we get. That is what we hope to do. That is what we aspire. That is what we stumble and fail and then pick ourselves up again once more. That is what it means to be a shishya. Because the guru is the guru. The guru is always shiva.